I recently had a rather large and expensive acrylic print fall off of my wall, and I thought what better thing to do than to make my own mounts for it in order to float it back off the wall uh, and give it a little bit of added flair, kind of a little bit of an industrial feel if you will, with some nice aluminum mounts that I made myself. The setup for this one's pretty simple. I made it 9 tenths of an inch in diameter and about 9 tenths of an inch uh, off the wall too, if you will. And the smaller hole allows for a screw to fit inside of the mount and obviously thread into the wall and hold the whole thing up. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and go through the process here. Sorry about that, everybody. Didn't mean to knock you down into the chip pan. So I gotta take off, I did measure though. Gotta take off another 65 thousandths. So we'll go 55. And then take the last 10. This is aluminum, so I'm not really too worried about it. I recommend this project very highly to anybody looking to practice up on their skills, especially if you're just getting into uh, machining. Uh, I did this with some aluminum here, and again, a lot of the things I did, especially since I had to make four of them, I simply tried to see what worked and what didn't for me. I tried to push my feeds and speeds, tried to see what I could get away with and what I couldn't. Uh, also, some great practice for measuring and in general trying to get your uh, repeatability your process up too. I mean how are you gonna do this so you made that one in, at X amount of time how are you gonna make this next one faster uh, I'll say that uh, the amount of time it took me to make my first one and, and don't get me wrong the planning here wasn't all that great I was kind of uh, figuring it out as I went along with the first one but I definitely got it to where with the amount of time it took me to make that first one I could now go back in and make a set of four alright this surface finish on here is pretty nasty I think uh, we had a little chip of something uh, a little little maybe the birds nesting there I don't know maybe you guys know better than I do while I did try and hit really close to the mark on what you would do to thread for my first uh, piece after that I pretty well just uh, used an actual nut to see when it would go on I'm pretty comfortable with my threading skills at this point so I thought let's just go for the speed since this is absolutely positively not a critical thing for fit there's my form tool that I'm going to use to do this, and all I'm going to do is get it super duper close there, maybe even touch off a little bit. I'm going to plunge in and scooch over a ways, and that's going to be my thread relief on the back because I don't want this to interfere with the... I'm not going to be able to thread right up to here because of my tool, obviously, so I don't want that to get uh, interfered with when I try and thread it into the outer shell. So anyway, and maybe a little later we'll see what we can do about cleaning up that rough finish there. Doesn't look the best, but I think a thousandth or so off of there won't be good. And honestly, you won't notice. I mean, the, none of this needs to be super precise. Oh, look at that beautiful, beautiful thread there. Making my little self a little flare leaf there. Get these guys measured and we'll see what that looks like, but that definitely looks like 20 TPI to me. I doubt you can see it there, but I can assure you that's 20 TPI. On the compound here, I'm just going to go in two, four, six, eight, ten thousandths of an inch. And I'm going to take a cut, of course, making sure that I've got my DRO set to zero. All right, well, we lost you guys there. I don't know what happened with that. But I've made a few, uh, few cuts here. And uh, the nut doesn't quite want to thread on, so that's all we're going to do is we're just going to check this with a known good nut. Another tape there. And we have got ourselves a very nice thread for what we're doing anyway. If you guys want in a future video, I'll bust out some thread wires and give it the old measurement. But that's exactly what we want right there. I've got a little bit of a gap, and I can guarantee you what it is. I just didn't go in quite as far as I should have on this. 
and it's this particular piece. So I'm just going to take a little bit off the front here, and uh, and we'll be good to go. Definitely a little high there. Didn't realize that. Might have a chip under that uh, tool. But nonetheless. Thread it in now. And uh, pretty close. Pretty close. I think I'm actually going to bust out that chamfer tool again because I think the problem's on the edge. So. Again, this is kind of like Bob Ross painting here. We're just making some, some happy little threads here. This is not going to hold anything. I'll be frank. Even if I lived in an area where there's uh, where there's more of a earthquake threat, I'd make this different. But I don't, so I'm not. And again, I'm coming after this with the uh, this piece I didn't really make the best. There we go. Got it now. So it's about perfect. And I will just touch this up ever so slightly with the tip of uh, my actual turning tool. Just gonna touch off and try and get a little bit of a better finish on this. Again, none of this is critical, so hey, I don't see yet. So okay. drag a nail on that so definitely gonna call that cosmetically acceptable right there I'm gonna part this off um, and then that will be my third one I'll have one more to make and then I'll make a uh, oh no that is that is my fourth one maybe with the threaded piece for the outside completed I need to spot drill uh, so that I can get started on the body of these uh, mounts I will go ahead and put a quarter inch drill through this thing and I'll just go all the way through the body of it all the way through so that that forms the basis of the hole that the screw will go through. Uh, once I've got this it's actually a pretty nice uh, hole for my larger drill to go through for my quarter 20. Uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is use the gauge on the back of the quill here. Uh, each one of these graduations is ten thousandths of an inch. So, uh, if you were to go around and it goes up to goes up to uh, twenty essentially. So, if you were going around once and then go around five more, that's a quarter of an inch. So, I'm going to do that uh, several times. Going to go down to about eighty uh, uh, eight tenths of an inch, eight hundred thousandths, and uh, we'll take it from there. Once that quarter inch hole is all squared away, I'm going to be set up nicely for the drill that will allow me to use my quarter 20 spiral flute tap. Well, as I stated, it's going to be as simple as drilling down 8 tenths of an inch into the body of this piece and then cleaning it up with a chamfer on it so that, that way it'll thread in a little bit nicer. I'm not skipping this step and again I need the practice. All right, we've got our spiral flute tap set up here. I'm going to be tapping at 30 RPM. I want to go nice and slow because I'll be frank, uh, I'm not the best at this. I want to give myself some extra time. Secondarily, as we're tapping under power, I'm going to be looking at my uh, dial indicator that I set up here, reading zero. Six trips around will be six uh, tenths of an inch. 
Uh, and I'm going to be going uh, about uh, three quarters of an inch in there with this. So I need to make sure that I'm relatively exact on this. So we'll take you for a ride here. It's not a good sign there. One, two, three, four. All right, coming back out the other way. thing in there. There goes. Okay, we're set up in the mill over here and we've got a quarter inch in mill and we have just put our piece on top of two parallels and we've got it pinched in there. Frankly, if you have cut it square on the lathe, you probably can get away with just uh, pinching it in the vise. I'm going to touch off on the top and uh, set my knee to zero, and then I'm going to touch off on the front uh, also, and I'm going to be pushing in a quarter inch. Um, I'm going to go down about 130 thousandths uh, into this, and I'll probably use the knee to do that. So turning in at about 2400 RPM, and uh, we'll see how it goes from here. Now we're going to set our knee to zero by loosening this lock ring and uh, adjusting the scale until zero lines up with the hash, lock it back down, and that's going to be how we bring the table up. So with that set with this, uh, we'll just set the Y uh, to uh, zero, and now you can see that we've moved the right one because there's the X going. So when we move in, that'll give us our quarter of an inch. And now it's time to make some real chips here. Try to turn it the right way. All right, needs to be cleaned up. But there's our completed completed piece. I will uh, use a file on that to clean it up ever so slightly and then it's ready to be mounted into the wall and to have the uh, the print sandwiched into it. I think this is going to be really nice. Um, you can't even catch a, a thumbnail on the little dents here so I'll just polish those out and it'll be right as rain. Alright our last step is going to be to face all these little guys off in this collet lathe here. So we'll use the handle back here and the brake on the foot to crank this guy down. Need to bring a tripod, yes. And then I'm just going to face this down until it is a quarter inch. So no big deal. Alright, since this lathe doesn't have a DRO or even anything to read on the, uh, the Z-axis, I've got this indicator set up and I'll zero it out when I uh, touch off on the face. Then I gotta go in 44 thousandths to get my cut. It looks like I might just be ever so slightly low. I'm leaving just the world's smallest nib on there. I'll, I'll take that off with probably just a little, little snick of anything there. Okay, well here's the finished product. You can see what we have going on there. We got the notches in all four of them. They all thread in and match up quite well. And then um, when it comes down to it, let me see if I can show this in here. Um, might not be able to see it down in there, but I can assure you it's threaded and it stops just a little bit. So you have that right there. Put a screw through it, put the uh, other bit up there and then call it a day. All right, you can see the finished product holding the print on the wall and here's a close-up 
of the actual piece installed in the wall. It worked out great, and I'm absolutely thrilled that I went ahead and put the time into making these. I'm sure I could have found something on the internet, but that wouldn't have been me making it myself. So uh, until next time, guys, uh, we'll catch you around. And if you should decide that you'd like anything to be made, you want to see any particular projects, go ahead and give me some ideas because I'm having a grand time doing this. Catch you later.